Now, there's a whole different class of ox uh, I'm sorry, whole different class of reactions referred to as oxidation reduction reactions. We call these redox for short. Okay, I think it's because ox red just sound funny, so I think they just say redox. Anyway, the, the electrons are going to be transferred, and this is a different type of reaction. Here, electrons are going to move from one atom to another. Okay, and when we look at these, and I'll talk more about this electron transfer in just a little bit, um, there's four different types of oxidation reduction reactions or redox reactions. There's what's called a single replacement, there's decomposition, synthesis, and combustion reactions. I'm going to talk about these in four different, actually, three different videos. I'll talk about single replacement, uh, and then I'll talk about synthesis, decomposition together because they kind of go hand in hand, and then combustion reactions are our final reactions, and that will be pretty much the end of this unit. Okay, so what's going on in oxidation reduction or what's called redox reaction? Well, two things are happening. One is the process of oxidation. Oxidation is when we lose electrons. Reduction is the process of gaining electrons. Okay, now if you'd like to, you know, have something to help you remember this, um, you could think of uh, something like, uh, let's put it over here, it's called oil rig. Oil rig. An oil rig is going to help you to remember that oxidation, okay, is loss, okay. Uh, reduction is gain. So that might help you remember um, oxidation reduction. So it would be oil rig. Um, another way to remember that is uh, Leo. Another way to do this would be, let's do it up and down. Leo uh, says Ger. Okay, so this might be another way to help you remember oxidation reduction. So oil rig or Leo says Ger. So this would be loss of electrons would be oxidation. And the other one would obviously be gain of electrons and that would be reduction okay so two little mnemonic devices to help you remember um, oxidation reduction terms okay so oxidation is the process of losing electrons reduction is the process of gaining electrons so what does that mean so let's say we have uh, sodium now this is not the sodium ion this is something you've really got to pay attention to this is sodium solid okay this is the elemental sodium okay just for, like we have on the periodic table protons are equal to 11 and our electrons are equal to 11, so it's neutral. And then we have chlorine. Now chlorine is going to take the form of Cl2, because now we're not talking about the ions. So you've got to really distinguish this from ionic compounds that we looked at in the double replacement reactions, now to um, reactions with uh, you know just the elemental states here. So we're looking at uh, pure chlorine gas okay, and pure sodium metal. And the electrons here would be equal to 17. Okay. Now what's going to happen is sodium has an extra electron. So let's just use a dot here to represent the electron. Okay. What happens is sodium is going to lose an electron to chlorine. And there's our loss of electrons. So we have loss of electron. That would be what sodium is doing. So what's happening over here, chlorine is gaining the electron. So it gains the electron. And this is what's referred to as an oxidation reduction reaction. Sodium has undergone oxidation because it lost an electron. Oops, oxidation. While the chlorine has undergone reduction. Right, it's undergone. Now here's one way I remember this. Now these oil rig and Leo Sesgur is a fine way to do it. To me, the best way to understand this is that reduction is what's happening to the charge. Now, what's the charge on sodium right now? Charge is zero. Okay, so the charge on elemental sodium is zero. So it's a zero charge. What's the charge on chlorine? It's zero. After it loses the electron, what's happening to the charge of the chlorine? Chlorine is now becoming a chloride ion. Don't worry about the dropping of the two, but what's going to happen is this bond is going to split and you're going to get two chloride ions out of this. Okay, But the idea is that one of those chlorine molecules is taking an electron from the sodium. All right, and I'll show you to draw this out a little bit more in just a second. But we get a negative charge. What happens is the charge is reduced, and that's where that term reduction comes from. Okay, Oxidation is over here. It comes from the sodium becoming positively charged.
So now, after the loss of electrons, what we end up with is we go from a neutral, neutral, to now charged particles, and then what happens is these attract each other, right, because they're positively, negatively charged, and what you end up with is a sodium ion bonded to a chloride ion, and we call that sodium chloride. Now, in here, in this compound, remember this is now a compound, these are elements, this is where we have our ionic compound. Right? We have an ionic compound. So what we have in here are two ions made up. So what we're talking about now is where does that ionic compound come from that we were using in those double replacement reactions? Well, it comes from the fact that when sodium comes near chlorine, it will lose, an, you know, one's going to lose an electron, the other's going to gain this. So what would this look like? So if we were to write this out, what we would have is we would have sodium solid, not aqueous anymore. We're going to have sodium solid, and we're going to react this with chlorine gas and what happens is we end up with sodium chloride ionic compound we're going to put a solid here because there's no water where there's no water in here so we're not going to have anything dissolved this isn't like a, a double replacement this is something different so we start with sodium solid chlorine gas and we end up with sodium chloride so we need to be able to identify based on a balanced equation which substance is undergoing oxidation and which one is undergoing reduction remember reduction is one that will have a charge that's getting lower so elements are uh, or let's say have a charge of zero have a charge equal to zero so all of our elements are going to have a charge equal to zero, okay? Um, ions are going to have charges to whatever, you know, based on, so if it's, it's an ionic compound, just to turn, figure out what the charges are. So ionic compounds, you know, determine the charge based on the ions. Determine the charge based on the ions. Okay, so I'll do a couple of these for you just to show you what you're going to have to, to know from this right now. We're going to look at the formation of these reactions and the predictions of them a little bit later. This is a synthesis reaction, and it's going to fall under the oxidation reduction, because if I look at that magnesium, the magnesium has a charge of zero. So if I write that down here, oops, magnesium has a charge of zero, because it's magnesium solid, not the magnesium ion. So the charge is going to be zero, plus oxygen. Now remember, oxygen is a gas. These aren't ions because they would be aqueous if they were. This is a little bit different than what we were looking at before, of course. So zero charge because that's elemental oxygen. It's the oxygen as if it were a gas. Then it forms magnesium oxide. Well now and over here on this side, because now I have an ionic compound that's a solid, this is going to have a minus two charge and the magnesium has a plus two charge. So what went through reduction? The oxygen. Oxygen went through reduction. So O2 was reduced in that reaction. What was oxidized? It was your magnesium. Because the magnesium went up in charge. Okay? This lost electrons to the oxygen. Okay? The nonmetals are always going to take the electrons, the metals are always going to lose them. And it's pretty much you know a simple way to, to look at it. Alright, let's look at another one. Let's take a look at B. Notice I didn't worry about the balancing, the coefficients, because I'm not really looking at the balance equation, I'm just trying to figure out what's undergoing reduction and what's undergoing oxidation. So let's look at aluminum. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to assign oxidation, or I'm going to assign the charges to them. Alright, so aluminum has a charge of zero because it's an element, right? It's in the elemental state, so it has a charge of zero. Here's an ionic compound, so I figure out what the charges are, just like I did last chapter. Minus two for oxygen all the time. And my iron is going to be a 3 plus. Okay, if you have questions on how I figured that out, make sure you ask in class. But we did that already in the last chapter. I'm assuming you already know that. All right, so if it's an element, it's going to have a charge of 0. Charge of 0. Ionic compound, aluminums are always 3 plus. Oxygen is always 2 minus. So if I'm going to try to figure out what's going through oxidation and reduction, all right, what I need to do is I need to determine what's losing and what's gaining electrons. So aluminum goes from a zero charge to a 
plus 3. So in order for it to go from 0 to plus 3, what would it have to do? It's going to have to have lost electrons because its charge is going up. To be honest, what I like to do is I like to look for the one that has the charge going down because 3 plus going to 0. That's going to be a reduction. So iron oxide compound is undergoing reduction. Okay, so this compound is changing. And over here, my aluminum is going to go through oxidation because it's going to go from 0 to plus 3. Okay, and that's it. That's all you're doing. You're looking for identifying oxidation and reduction. Which ones are going through which? Okay, let's look at the last one. Uh, the last one would be... Uh, okay, so again, what I'm doing is I'm looking at the charges over here. This is me 0 because it's an element. Here's an element, 0. Now I have a compound, minus 1, plus 1. So what was it that went through reduction? Which one went lower in charge? The fluorine did. Fluorine went through reduction. So the fluorine is going to take the electrons from the cesium. Non-metals take electrons, metals lose them. So for this problem here, what's going to undergo reduction is going to be fluorine. F2. The F2 gas, technically. And then what's going through oxidation would be my cesium solid. Okay, and that's oxidation reduction. I'm sure there's going to be some questions in class, and I'll definitely answer them and try to, to clarify all this a little bit more in class. But that's the general background. All right, I'll talk to you guys later.